This first Sunday of Advent, I'd like to use as a sermonic theme, the beggars, with a sub-theme of the warmth of God's shine. For those of us that frequent downtown High Park, walking around through the downtown area through 57th Street on foot, you come to recognize certain faces on those streets where you spend time. You come to especially recognize certain faces of people who spend more time outside than they do inside, who heretofore I will refer to as the outside people. I have a path I frequent in Hyde Park. There's a path I take, and it delivers me to somewhere that I want to go. It connects me to a destination that I'm trying to get to. And oftentimes, at certain times of the day, when I'm walking down this path, I see Mark standing right in front of a certain establishment. I remember the first time that I saw Mark. He was more animated and doing a lot more talking, and he wore a long black and green garment dragging almost to the ground. But it's been a few yards, a few years of observing outside people and observing Mark, and he seems to have settled down. His demeanor seems more quiet, but I still see him. He speaks when spoken to. He stays mostly to himself. Every now and then I see him riding around on a divvy bike, I'm not sure how he got it. And he only asks one thing, he asked for money to feed himself. And I wondered to myself, how bad do things have to get for a person to beg? How many meals does a person have to miss before one allows oneself to stand on a street of strangers hearing no after no after no, waiting for a yes? How far do things have to go for one to resign oneself to ask strangers with often a lot on their plates as well, to have some compassion on your situation? How far does one have to be pushed to be desperate to stand on the streets to ask for help? And what happens inside of a human when they are reduced to having to ask someone else to help them? I want to talk about the beggars today. As a pastor, I get a fair amount of asks from people who are in some desperate places. When they come to me, I can tell they are at the end of choices and being able to handle their situation on their own. They are mostly strapped in hope and sadness at the same time. They still believe that sometimes the church can and will help. And so they climb our steps asking for help. They come to me in the role of the pastor, hoping to be saved from their circumstances. They come because they have run out of options and paths. And etched in their eyes and voices is a guttural cry for a lifeline to be thrown out to pull them in from the waters that threaten to overtake them. This is where we enter the psalm today. In all of the Old Testament, the one place we hear people's desperation, where we hear people's bareness, is in the Psalms. Many of the Psalms are filled with beggars lamenting over their situation. The beg is present here as they try to understand not only the absence of God, but why has God turned away from them? They question God. They come to the conclusion that they must have really messed up because God is angry and absent from them. But they do not know what they've done exactly to make God so angry. They only know they are desperate enough to beg God for help. With their backs up against the wall, the community showed up in lament. Hisham Awatani is a college student like many others who went home to his family for Thanksgiving holidays. He was out with his friends during the holidays, chatting in English and Arabic, adorned in his Palestinian scarf, when he was shot by a stranger. Once on the ground, the stranger walked over to his body and hovered over him. He just knew that he was dead. He survived, but is now paralyzed from the chest down. 
He is in the spinal care trauma unit and will face months of physical therapy. It is unclear the days ahead, but what is clear is that hatred got loose. I don't know if you guys remember Reverend Linda Barnes. She's a pastor of a small church in Louisville, Kentucky, much like our small church. She plays the piano and she preaches. Amen for that. <laughs> she moves throughout the church fulfilling different responsibilities. And at her church, she served there for 30 years. Her church status changed this past summer when the Southern Baptists voted to oust all churches that had female pastor leadership. She had never thought things would go this way, but her church found itself disfellowship from the larger denomination. This potential vote consumed her days and nights. She worried about it. And while she is the pastor at her church after the vote was taken this summer, her congregation feels rejected and isolated. One member commented, we wouldn't even be able to keep the doors of the church open if we didn't have female leadership. Somebody ought to say amen. <laughs> Before it becomes put in their constitution, there will be one more vote in 2024 that will go before the Southern Baptist Convention. I share these stories that we might realize, if we haven't, it seems appropriate for us in 2023 to beg, even if begging feels beyond us. I ain't gonna beg. Who is she talking to? Am I really gonna beg someone? Is it that bad? Maybe somewhere between here and there, there's something worth lamenting that calls out to you too. Maybe there's something you've been talking about to Jesus and you can't get no answers. Maybe you feel the struggle and the pinch in your life. Maybe you have a loved one whose struggle impacts you. Maybe you look at someone and you can see how bad they are struggling. It's time for us to lament. It's time for us to beg. Our world is torn and broken. Our people are damaged. Our youth are struggling. Our leaders are waging unnecessary wars. Our politicians are not resisting corruption. It's time for somebody to cry out to the Lord, let's get down to it. It's time for us to beg stand prostate, hold our cups out on the street, and beg for God's intervention, beg for some rain, beg for a little bit of hope. In this first week of Advent, we commit to waiting for a liberator. We wait for someone to help us down here on earth. We wait for hope. Lord, help us out. Hope is an act of faith. Even in the lament today, there is hope. Hope is an act of faith. I read at the beginning of service, Desmond Tutu said, hope is like a light that shines even when the situation around us is dark. God, restore us. God, help us out. God, hear us. God, don't be angry with us. The psalmist acknowledges Israel's suffering, but begs God to stir up your might and save us. The psalmist is begging God, restore us. Let your face shine that we might be saved from our situation. Sometimes when you're desperate enough, you don't care how you look and you don't care what others think about you. God, can you help me out? It doesn't matter who's looking. It doesn't matter how many times I have to ask. God, let your face shine upon us. God, save us. God, intervene. God, let me know you're up there. God, the situation has gotten bad down here on earth. God, hear my prayers. God, I am begging you. God, we are not so proud that begging is beyond us. God, we are begging you to see your people through. In spite of everything, this community still hopes that God will save them. 
Yesterday, some strangers had compassion, and they buy Mark a meal. Yesterday, he feels the warmth of bread and meat touching his stomach. But more than that, he feels the hope of someone acknowledging his presence and his situation. Someone spoke to him. Someone looked into his eyes. Someone acknowledged his need for nutrition. More often, people try to distance themselves from him like they're going to catch the cooties. Try not to see him. Try not to be bothered. But yesterday, he not only felt in his stomach, he felt his humanity. And a tear finds its way down his face. We wait in this season of Advent for hope against unspeakable odds. The young college students have a launchgood.com page. They have a goal to raise $250,000, and they've already raised $242,000 since after Thanksgiving. Over 3,000 people responded with their wallets. The paralyzed college student mom said, we got a long road ahead, but we are hopeful. My son is alive. My son will recover. We will get through this. What has encouraged us so much is the response of people across America. Your words of support touch us. And the lady pastor, the lady pastor feeling torn and hurt after 30 years of service in her denomination, is now finding herself on the outside, outside people. But her church, knowing the war, said, we're going to vote even before the Southern Baptists. And unanimously, her church voted to keep her, even in spite of what the Southern Southern Baptist gospel voted. Her executive director says, our church represents who God could truly be. While there are unspeakable social ills happening, not afar, but even in Chicago, even in our communities, even in our lives. People of God, we are called not only to wait on hope, but we are called to embrace hope. Like our ancestors, we beg for God to restore us. And we are not too proud to what? We're not too proud to beg. We beg for God to shine God's face upon us. We beg for God to save us. We beg for God to work it out. We beg God to show up in this world. We wait for hope. Amen.